Hi there, this is our uh, weekly help video that kind of spans weeks six and seven. I posted that document in the announcements last week in week six, and um, I'm just now getting the video response recorded in week seven. Um, so, and to go along with that, this is gonna be a pretty short video because um, there are only two questions, but I also wanted to um, kind of give an, an explanation and, and an apology. Um, I do have some family things going on. Um, my mother-in-law is on hospice, and so we're we're right at the end of her um, her battle with cancer. So sorry, that's a lot of personal information. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that there may be um, some times over the next couple of weeks that my responses are a little bit more delayed than they normally would be. Um, but please understand that getting back to you is still a significant priority for me. And um, even if there are some delays, please know that I am still here. I'm still. Um, working on on getting responses out, but that's one of the reasons that this video it took me a little bit longer than normally it would. So um, again, my apologies, and um, please know that I still am am here to support you in this course. And um, if I ever don't respond to an email, please don't hesitate to resend it. Sometimes they get filtered off to the spam folder, um, especially if it's coming from a non CWI email address. So if you don't get a response from me um, in 48 hours, please, please, please send me another another nudge. Um, and so then the two questions that were asked on the Google Doc that I posted last week, one was about the um, getting feedback on test on exam questions. Um, and the, the short answer to that is that in order to preserve the integrity of the testing materials, I don't make the answers available, the correct answers available for those exam questions. Um, as you look through your results for an exam, you should be able to see your answers and whether they were correct or incorrect. But if at any point you got something counted wrong that you don't understand why it was incorrect, feel free to take a screenshot sh screenshot of it and send that to me or just email me and say, you know, on, on exam two, this question, I'm not, I don't understand why I got it wrong or whatever. Um, and I'm always ha happy to help, happy to follow up on that kind of thing and make sure that you understand going forward um, what the problem was because a lot of these these um, tests come from a pool of questions and a significant portion of the final exam will come from those same um, question pools that the quizzes and tests have come from through the, the semester. So I don't want you to ever feel like, well, I don't know why I got that wrong, but there's no way to, f to find out. So um, definitely shoot me an email if you have questions about that. Um, or you can also come in during my office hours or set up an appointment to come in and we'll just walk through like if you feel like you did really poorly on the entire test I've done this with students before and I'm always happy to just sit down and walk you through the entire test of okay it looks like this specific concept threw you off um, or you know or maybe you didn't take the time you needed to on it or that kind of thing so I'm happy to to do that with you at any time and um, then the other question was about dreaming in Spanish so um, with you'll hear kind of the conventional wisdom is if you dream in a language, that means you're fluent in the language. And, you know, probably if you're in this class, you're not at the point of being fluent in Spanish, but you may be one of those people who language is just, um, is, is a very, um, forms a very significant part of your awareness of the world and your interaction with the world. Um, and so as you've developed some level of, of conversational abilities in Spanish that that is transferring into your dreams as well, especially if you're studying right before you go to bed. Um, and I'm not sure all of the brain science behind it and how this ties into ties into dreams, but I do know that when you study in the evening um, and then you go to sleep, that during that time, during the time that you're sleeping, your brain takes that information and stores it in a different part of your brain. It stores it into your longer term memory instead of your short term memory. Um, so again, I, I don't know all of the, the biological mechanisms of this, but it could be that you dreaming in Spanish is part of that process. Um, I'm not sure, but it definitely is a good sign. It means that, um, that you're able to engage with the language even when you're not you know, consciously sitting down to study Spanish. So whatever you've been doing to develop your awareness of the language and to um, and to make it more of a part of your your day to day life and routine, keep that up. And um, I hope that more and more of you are finding that you're getting to that point where 
Spanish words come to your mind without, you know, without even realizing that you're thinking in Spanish or, um, or you hear a little Spanish and you're able to interpret, you're able to understand part of what you hear. Um, so keep looking for opportunities to make Spanish more part of your day-to-day -day life and hopefully more of you will have that kind of experience. Um, all right, so short video, hope it was helpful and um, I appreciate all of your, your understanding and your patience um, during these next couple weeks and um, I will see you all online.